What's up guys, Lance here from Hijack86. So this is going to be a summary, kind of conclusions video on our Prairie Dog trip we took recently out to Nebraska. If you guys haven't watched those videos yet, there are three videos up. I'll try and create a playlist, but um, yeah, if you find that stuff entertaining or interested in Prairie Dog hunting, I'd encourage you to go check that out. It was some pretty fun stuff. So. Uh, again, just wanted to kind of do a summary and a wrap up of our thoughts, share some of the experiences, uh, things that we learned, any changes that we're going to make next time we go out. So if you're, again, interested in prairie dog hunting or it's going to be your first time prairie dog hunting like it was for us, uh, you may find some of this uh, information, um, good stuff before you go out and do your hunt. Um, so again, this is uh, my first time going out and doing any type of prairie dog hunting ever. I'd never done any prairie dog hunting before this point and actually my dad and I, um, he, hadn't, he hadn't done any either, but this is actually our first time out of this location as well. So we've never been out of this location. So it was more or less kind of like a, a little bit of a scouting trip to see if it was gonna be some good shooting um, and worth, worth heading back because it was about a, oh, about a six hour drive out there. So, um, so just to give you some information on everything, if you watch those videos, uh, there are some fun and cool stuff in there. Uh, but quick rundown, we were running two firearms uh, primarily, uh, both AR-15s. My dad had a 20-inch Rock River Arms varmint uh, with a big old scope on there, like a Citron Big Sky. It was like a 20 or 25X, can't remember for sure. Uh, and then I used my 16-inch uh, SPR bill, which has that Rainier Arms Ultra Match barrel with the Vortex Viper PST 2.5 to 10. Wow. Uh, so, really just wanted to use the setups that we had. We were shooting primarily 50 grain VMAX, which was a Fiocchi ammunition. We'd chronoed that previously. Uh, it didn't shoot as hot as I would like, and the extreme spread was a, a lot higher than I really would have liked. And we kind of battled that once we got, um, you know, shooting a little bit longer ranges, which you probably saw in the, those videos. Um, but that was our setup as far as gear goes. Location, again, we are, at, we are in Nebraska. It's about central Nebraska on some private property. Uh, the landowner out there has had a lot of problems with these prairie dogs in this particular area. They've kind of gotten a little bit out of hand. Uh, a lot of holes out in there. They're kind of tearing up the ground. So you really need to get that stuff removed. So like I said originally, this is less of what I would consider hunting and it was more uh, pest removal, uh, how we were doing it. So again, less hunting, more pest removal. Um, the weather uh, was fairly cooperative. We we had a few issues with wind, as you could tell out there. Uh, the wind was, was gusting a lot, and it really didn't go down until the evening. So we were kind of battling winds that were anywhere from, I would say, 10 to 20 miles per hour both of the days we were out there. We were there one, uh, one afternoon and evening the following morning uh, until about noon, and then we took off. So we were there about a total of one full day spread out between two days. Uh, so the wind was pretty tough. Um, the setups that we are running, uh, as far as ammunition goes, the 50 grain VMAX is, we found to be pretty good up close, obviously, ballistically speaking um, and terminally speaking. Uh, it kind of kind of was a, a lot of overkill, as you saw in some of those shots. Uh, taken out to long range, um, it didn't perform nearly as well, which is kind of to be expected when you start running light bullets. Uh, and again, that is a 50 grain VMAX bullet. Uh, when we hit the targets, terminally speaking, it seemed to do really well. Uh, longer ranges past like uh, that 250 yard mark, I would say. Uh, you didn't get that uh, extreme fragmentation like the VMAX is really known for uh, when we're at those longer ranges, but it still, it still put them down really well. Um, but yeah, wind was something we uh, didn't think we'd be battling as much as we were uh, and the same thing goes for range like I said This was our scouting trip. We didn't know how how far our shots were going to be We ended up finding that once we take a, a, a shot or two um, On the close prairie dogs, they would pretty much go down and they would not come back up for for hours So you basically get one or two shots at those guys up close They'd go down they'd stay down and all of our shots from there on out were usually beyond 250 and I would say most of them were between 300 and 450 so again not the most ideal setup with that light bullet going past you know those two and three hundred yard marks um, it did well and it was pretty fun shooting it's fun reading the wind and all that jazz but um we could have done a little bit better with uh, ammunition selection uh, and I, I did bring out some 77 grain of my open tip match 556 stuff a couple of you guys mentioned that in the comments why didn't you use more of that um, I probably shot oh a magazine or maybe half a mag of that stuff um, I didn't bring a ton out and I, I really didn't want to shoot it mainly because it, it is a little bit more expensive than 
uh, the stuff that I bought, I had I purchased 500 rounds of that uh, Fiocchi 50 grain, um, so I kind of just wanted to shoot it. Um, next time we go out, I'm definitely going to be bringing more heavy grain ammunition, uh, assuming I'm going to be bringing the AR again, and I probably will. I'll probably bring a couple more different um, setups there. I'll, I'll probably bring out the, the 243, maybe even the 308. But again, my primary firearm would still be the AR-15. Um, and for those longer shots, that 77 grain stuff is really going to help. Uh, a couple more observations. We were, if you couldn't tell, they're shooting from uh, more or less a private road. Uh, and that road gave us a decent view uh, of the hill that we were shooting at. We did not have any benches uh, or anything of that sort. We were shooting from the prone the entire time. Uh, it fatigued us a little bit. In fact, my dad was having uh, enough issues uh, with fatigue that he really did not shoot a whole lot. Uh, like 99% of all the shooting was done by me. I want to say he shot like maybe three or four rounds out of that Rock River. So we're um, we're gonna kind of tweak his setup a little bit. And I know that going out there that he's not as comfortable in the prone. Uh, we're probably gonna do some type of a, a mobile bench setup next time we go out there, which is really gonna help for visibility. Uh, there was a, a time or two there where I was in the prone. My dad was spotting from a seated position, and he could see a prairie dog or two, and I could not see them because I was too low. So we made some adjustments there and uh, uh, took some shots from the seated position with a bipod. So that's another kind of thing to kind of keep in mind when you're going out uh, with all of this stuff. This is really just information based off of where we were in our location. So your experience may be a little bit different. So take this stuff with a grain of salt. Um, if you're going out as far as gear goes, any particular changes that I may make next time we go out, I would say bring yourself a cooler, have some drinks, have some food, um, bring yourself plenty of ammo. Preferably at least two people, one person to spot, one person to shoot. Uh, in my case where I'm trying to run a camera, uh, it'd be definitely more ideal to have three people out there so you have a shooter, a spotter, and a guy dedicated to run the camera work only. Um, there are a few cases where there was just so much going on that I couldn't handle all that uh, responsibility so I didn't get the, the most um, or the best shots of the camera. Uh, and that's kind of to be expected. Um, sometimes we get out there having fun. Um, YouTube isn't my, my day job and I like to share with you guys the, the fun stuff we have shooting the best we can. Um, but sometimes it's just nice to don't, not worry about the camera, you know, and actually just have some fun and do some shooting. So um, they were, they were, <laughs> the, the, the prairie dogs are pretty fast movers and I've seen them before uh, up close, but it's just been a long time since I've seen them and I was really surprised at how small they were. Um, they're, they're a pretty small target, relatively speaking. You're looking at a target that's probably, um, you know, the grown ups are three to four inches wide, maybe, um, and the they can get up to where, as I would say, like 10. 10 inches to 12 inches tall when they're standing up. So most of ours, I would say, were probably around that 10, 11 inch mark in height uh, and somewhere between the three and four in width. So that's a pretty small target, uh, especially when you get up to that 300, 400 yard mark and you got a you got a wind going. So your issue isn't so much the elevation, uh, assuming you can get good holds or you can um, you know have good data and you can dial your stuff. Uh, the issue is you know moving left to right. Uh, I found out for the most part, um, but. Any other changes I would make? Uh, bring a tent if you want. Stay in the shade uh, if you can. If you can do that, I'm going to be making a couple modifications to my setup with my 16-inch 5.56 gun that I brought out. Um, I am going to throw on some sort of muzzle brake for two reasons. One, uh, so it will accept a suppressor, which would lead me to my next point: is I would use a, supp a, su a suppressor. Uh, again, we had issues where you fire a couple rounds and the dogs up close just go down and won't come back out, but the the ones way out there, you know, they keep coming back because they're not really hearing that gunshot up close. So suppressors would be awesome. Uh, the second reason I would do a muzzle break um, is for return to target. Uh, I was using that BE Myers 249F flash hider, which is an awesome flash hider. It really doesn't do anything for recoil reduction. Uh, in fact, it's as far as recoil reduction goes and muscle rise, it's, it's worse than your you know your standard A2. Um, but uh, yeah, we are shooting those small targets at those long ranges, and while an AR-15 and 5.56 doesn't recoil very much as is. It would be really nice to have um, some sort of muzzle brake on there that would give you every little advantage that you could because with those rapid engagements of those small targets, um, a lot of them being movers, it'd be uh, really beneficial to have a really flat shooting gun. So I, I really uh, see why a lot of guys go out with big 20 plus, plus inch uh, 
varmint and heavy profile barrels, um, you know, running rifle length yeah, gas systems and here. benches and stuff, and they got all their guns in a vise. I can definitely see why they do that, not only for um, accuracy reasons uh, and having a heavy gun um, that's going to you know, not move a whole lot under recoil. So don't blame anybody there. I also don't blame anybody for wanting to go out and shoot like 220 Swift or 243 Winchester or any of like the, the 6 mil or 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, again, those bullets with uh, higher velocities, um, higher, higher ballistic coefficients are all going to buck wind better. Um, anytime you have a faster bullet too, you're going to have a little bit more forgiving. Um, uh, it's going to be a little bit more forgiving when it comes to any type of elevation hold. So if you're off one way or another, it's not as a huge, uh, a big of a deal and you have a larger chance of hitting because your um, your bullet is shooting flatter. Um, so those, those are all things to keep in mind. Um, there's probably a couple other changes that I'll make to my setup. Um, just really small things and I think I'll get to those uh, down the road. Uh, maybe do a separate video on those. But those are the big things. Uh, I would say ammunition, uh, muzzle brake, to accept a suppressor, and obviously suppressors. Uh, as far as my dad goes, we uh, we pretty much need to get him a new optic. His optic is uh, a big old overpowered optic that has pretty bad eye relief. Um, it doesn't have external turrets. Um, the 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 parallax adjustment is at the front of the optic, very long optic. So he was just having all, all around not a great time with that. So we need to get him like a good setup, and we kind of had like a little come to Jesus, he had a little reality check when he got down behind the gun and realized um, how difficult it was to shoot behind that optic because he hasn't put a lot of rounds through that gun of his. So um, I think he'll be changing that optic soon and probably putting some type of swivel bipod on that gun. Right now he has a, a non-swivel Harris and having the ability to adjust for um, you know uh, elevation, or not necessarily elevation, but terrain changes to level your gun out is, is pretty important. So those are just some of the updates I would make as well as, uh, you know, our observations and, and stuff like that. So next time we go back out, which we will be going back out uh, sometime, I'm not sure exactly when, we'll be making those changes and going out and trying to get a little bit more video. Maybe we'll have a couple more people with us next time we go out. I would suggest if you're on the fence and you have the ability to do any type of prairie dog hunting or you have a farmer that you know or can get in contact with to help that individual remove pests if they are a pest in that area. Um, and that's really you know up to the landowner at that point. Um, I would highly encourage you guys to go out and do some prairie dog hunting. It was super fun. Uh, we shot a lot. I would say as far as total dogs, I after looking at the video, because we didn't keep any sort of tally, I want to see if we maybe got a couple dozen, um, which is more than I thought we actually got. So a couple dozen wasn't bad. We had we had a lot of fun. It's, it's super fun doing that stuff. It's really educational going out, trying to engage small targets uh, at uh, varying distances who are also moving, um, you know, and trying to just kind of sync up everything with your spotter and communication really becomes key when it comes to um, talking with your spotter and all that stuff. So it really helps everything out. So, you know, you get teamwork, shooting ability, um, making wind adjustments, wind calls, elevation, uh, doing range finding and all that stuff. So it was really helpful. I think it definitely made me a better shooter. Um, and I'm really excited to go do it again. So if you guys got questions, comments, concerns, put that stuff down in the uh, comment section below or shoot, shoot, shoot us a message on like Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And we'll go from there. But um, yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. Did you see that skip? Yeah, was it just low? It had to be because I just thought you'd have got him the way it did. Uh... Yeah, that was the, the round. He, he had to get hit with dirt hard. <laughs> we'll watch if he pokes his head out again. <laughs>